we're going to be talking about if else statements in programming. The idea behind an if else statement is it allows us to check whether a condition is true. If that condition is true, we do one activity. Whereas if that condition is false, we do something else. Let's see an example of how this works in JavaScript. Let's start with something very basic. Then afterwards, we'll code up something a little bit more complex, making use of some of the other concepts we've considered so far in the course. So we'll start with a basic if statement. So in JavaScript, the syntax is if followed by brackets. And inside here, we're going to type some condition. So we'll just write this out. This is something that's referred to as pseudocode, where we mark up the structure of something using syntax that's not real code. So saying if some condition execute this, or let's say do this code block, then we put else do this code block. Okay, so if this condition here evaluates to true, we do this code block, else, so if it's not true, then we do this code block. So hopefully you can see how this works. This is a technique referred to as writing pseudocode. When you're dealing with a complex problem in coding, rather than try and write out all the code, we can use this simplified version of code to map things out. Once everything's mapped out, we can then go through it again and include the correct syntax for that particular code. So if some condition, now let's start with something that we would probably never write. Let's say if one is larger than two, now we know one is not larger than two, then we will console log, condition is true. Otherwise, we'll console log, condition is false. Okay, hopefully we know what we're going to get here. So the way JavaScript is going to look at this is going to check this particular condition. And if this condition is true, it's going to console log condition is true. We know in this case that this condition is false. So what we should see is condition is false log to the screen. Let's see if it works. We get condition is false. If we were to change the condition to if three is larger than two, well, we know that now this should evaluate to true. Let's run this code we get condition is true. So based on whether this condition evaluates to true or false, we can execute one or the other block of code. Okay, so let's write something a little bit more interesting. And we're going to write a function and we're going to call it weekend checker. And this function is going to take a parameter and it's going to be day number of week. And this is going to be a number from one to seven, where one is Monday and Saturday and Sunday are six and seven. So it's going to take in this day number of week. And we're going to say if day number of week is smaller than six, then we're going to console log. It's not the weekend yet. Else. Now else in this case means the day of the week isn't smaller than six. So it's either six or seven. We can console log. Let's do this in caps. It is the weekend. Okay, fairly straightforward. Let's see what happens if we play around with this function. In fact, we're going to call this function. So we've defined our function. We know it takes a param, which is going to be a number. So we are going to call weekend checker and we're going to pass in the value two. So we're assuming this means a Tuesday. Let's run this. And it says it is not the weekend yet, it's Tuesday. So for some reason, you didn't know whether day two of the week was the weekend, you could technically use this function. You probably wouldn't, but you could. So if we try day six, now it says, yes, it is the weekend. Now, of course, there are still some problems with our code. So after we've written some code that appears to work, we still need to check that code for bugs. This is very important, no matter which language you are writing. Once your code has been written, it's important to then test that code because at the moment it just looks like the code is working. Uh, but let's see what happens if we deliberately try and break this. 
Let's pass in the value 12. Let's run this. Tells us it's the weekend. Why does it tell us it's the weekend? It's because this particular day is not smaller than six. It's not six or seven either. So we really shouldn't get this response. We should actually tell the user that this particular day is not in range or something similar. Another way we could try and break this is by inputting a string. So let's just put in a random string. Let's see what happens here. Let's run this. And again, it says, yes, it is the weekend. So why has it done that? Well, the issue here is that it's going to execute this else block no matter what the value of the parameter is. All it's done here is said, is day number of weeks more than six? And if the answer is no, and the answer is no in this case because it's a string, then it's automatically going to execute this second block of code no matter the parameter that we actually input to the function. So you can see something that appeared to work at first value actually has some serious issues. So let's address these two issues. We don't want this to take in a number that is larger than seven. We only want it to take in between one and seven. And we don't want it to be able to take in a string. It needs to be a number. Now a simple way of solving this problem is to make use of an else if code block. So this allows us to check for a second condition. We do so in brackets again, followed by another block of code. So what will happen here is if this first condition is true, the first block of code will be executed. But if that first condition is not true, then the JavaScript will check this second condition. And if this second condition is true, then it will execute this block of code that we haven't written yet. If neither of those conditions are true, as a fallback option, it will execute this last block of code. Now, what we're going to do is move this particular code block to the else if section of the code. And we are going to treat this final else as the user having input a value that is not applicable to the type of function we're trying to write here. So we'll just say, please enter a valid number between one and seven. Okay, so we'll fix our code. If day number of week is smaller than six, okay, now that's not bulletproof, but we'll come back to that a bit later. Else if day number of week equals six, and we want to use equals equals here, okay? We'll talk about that in a minute. And we also want to use two pipes. This is called the pipe character. And if we put two of them together, it indicates or in a condition. So day number of week equals six or day number of week equals equals seven. Now, why do we have two equal signs here? Because a single equal sign is known as the assignment operator. When we are assigning a value to a variable, we use a single equal sign. Well, here we don't want to set day number of week equal to six. We want to check if it already equals six. And to do that, we make use of the comparison operator here with two equal signs. We also have or. Now there are other types of operator. For example, we have two ampersand signs. This means and. In this case, we're interested in or, which is the two pipes. So let's follow our logic through so far. Is the day number of weeks smaller than six, i.e. is it between one and five? If so, we're going to console log. It is not the weekend yet. But if that's false, we'll then check to see if the day number of week is either six or it equals seven. So if it's exactly six or seven, then it is the weekend. Else, so let's say users input some value that shouldn't be input into this, like the number 12, for example, or a string, then we're going to console log, please enter a valid number between one and seven. Okay, so let's run this with this string that shouldn't be input into the function. Now it says, please enter a valid number between one and seven. So the user has supplied a parameter that doesn't make sense. So we're letting the user know you need to input a number between one and seven. If the user tries to input 12, which again shouldn't be valid, and we run this, please enter a number between one and seven. Now this is fairly good. 
But even when something appears to be working, remember what we said, we need to carry on looking for bugs. It doesn't matter what the programming language is. How can we break this code? Take a moment, look at the logic here. Where's the weak point in this code where our user can break the code? Not that the user is really going to get anything out of breaking this code. At least I don't think so. Well, they have weak smaller than six. That seems like a weak point here. What if we specify that the day is minus one? That shouldn't be a valid parameter that our user can input. Let's see what happens when we run this code. It is not the weekend yet. What it should be telling the user is, please enter a number between one and seven. So we need to tidy up our logic here. So if day of week is smaller than six and two ampersand signs, day number of week is larger than zero. So we've actually specified that the day of the week has to be between one and five for it to be valid. Now let's rerun this. And a various user has entered the parameter minus one. Now the function returns, please enter a valid number between one and seven. Okay, so it seems pretty good, right? But there's probably still a way to break this code. Our user for his own evil ends has figured out that he can input what some programming languages refer to as a float. So that is a non-whole integer. So for example, day 1.5 of the week. Now JavaScript does not differentiate between whole numbers, which you can refer to as integers and floats, which you can refer to as a number with a decimal place, whereas other languages do. JavaScript's just going to treat this like a regular integer. And guess what? This integer is between one and five. So if we execute this, we get the response. It is not the weekend yet, but we are trying to get our user to input a whole integer between one and seven. Now we could look at this and say, it doesn't really matter. This is obviously just halfway through day one, right? So it's technically not the weekend yet. So no problem. But let's just say that we didn't want the user to be able to input such a value. And if they did, we want them to get the response, please enter a valid number between one and seven. So how can we solve this problem? How can we check to see if the parameter given by the user is a whole number rather than a float? Well, we can do this by making use of the modulus function. It's a very useful mathematical operation to be aware of. And what it does is divide a number by another number and return the remainder. So let's see an example of this. Let's console log 12 modulo or modulus function, which is this percent sign. And we're going to run 12 modulo five. Okay, so let's just see what value we get from the script and then we'll explain what's happening here. So we get the value two. So what the modulus function does, it's running 12 divided by five. Now what is 12 divided by five? Well, rather than give some kind of decimal value, the answer we're looking for here is it's two with a remainder of two. So two times five is 10, and then we have a remainder of two. That's what's being returned here by this function. Now, when we have a whole number and we divide it by one, we will always get a remainder of zero. So if you do 10 divided by one, it goes in 10 times. In fact, let's try that. Let's run 12 modulo one. Let's run this. We get a result of zero. But what if I do 12.1 modulo one? Let's run this. So you can see we have a remainder. One goes into 12.1 12 times with a remainder of 0.1. Now notice that we don't get exactly 0.1. This is to do with the way that numbers are stored in memory. We don't need to go into the details of this now, although it's something you can research if you are very interested in this. Either way, we don't get a modulo result of exactly zero here. So for example, if we instead change this to an expression and say console log 12.1 modulo one equals exactly zero, we're now going to get a Boolean response. It's gonna say false because it doesn't equal exactly zero. It equals 0 
whereas 12 modulo 1 equals equals 0 is going to return true. So take a moment and think about this. How can we use this to prevent our user from being able to input a floating point value or a decimal value that's not a whole number? Now, one thing we could do is add a condition to each of these conditions. So we could say day number of week is smaller than six and it's larger than zero. And if we call the modulo one on that number, it equals exactly zero. Or if we prefer, we can make this an else if, and we can then start off by checking that condition first. So we can say if day number of week modulo one, and we don't want to say equals equals zero because that's to check if it is a whole integer. So we actually want to say it doesn't equal zero. And we can do this in a lot of programming languages by placing an exclamation point before the equal sign. So this expression reads day number of week modulo one does not equal zero. And we can then say console log, that is not a whole number. Let's test our script. So we're no longer calling the function. So let's get rid of console log. So we're now going to call our function weekend checker and we're going to pass in the value 0 0.5. That is not a whole number. Now, of course, we've added a lot of extra code here. We just want to make sure that our script is working for a legitimate user who is only interested in entering a value between one and seven. So let's pass in the value one. It's not the weekend yet. Let's pass in the value six. Yes, it is the weekend. Let's pass in the value 7.1. That's not a whole number. Great. So what happens if we try and be sneaky and pass in 7.0? Is this going to break anything? Yes, it is the weekend. So it hasn't broken anything because that modulus function, well, 7 modulo 1 is 0. 7.0 modulo 1 is also 0. So we can see that we're not able to break this function. Let's try and enter some kind of string. See what happens here. That's not a whole number. That's true. Let's enter a Boolean, right? We haven't tried that so far. It's not the weekend yet. Well, that's interesting. So what just happened there? So this is something that's fairly common to programming languages as well. The number one can also be used to represent true, while the number zero can also be used to represent false. So what's happening here, when we pass this value or this Boolean value true, it's actually the same as passing the value one. So JavaScript's trying to be intelligent here and it's interpreting this as one for the purposes of this if else statement. That's not necessarily what we want. So let's see if we can tidy this up even further. Let's start by adding a new block of code. So make this first block an else if, and we're going to say if, and we're going to say type of, which we looked at earlier in the course. So it's going to return the type of value, the type of data stored in a variable. So type of day number of week, if it equals exactly Boolean, well, we don't want to take that. So we're going to say console log, you have submitted a Boolean, please input a number between one and seven. Okay, let's save that, let's execute. And you can see it's no longer going to take the value true, but it should still take the value one. It's not the weekend yet. Okay, so this is a little bit of a contrived example. The main reason we did this is to explore some of the different forms of logic. So we've seen how we can create some more advanced conditional statements. We've seen mathematical operation modulus being used. We've seen how to include and and or as part of our conditional statements. But the key takeaway from this is how we've constructed this if else. So we started with a basic if else, and then we've expanded that to be if else if else. And you can see we can have as many else if blocks of code as we want. And then we wrap everything up with a final else block of code. So that's pretty much a catch all. So if none of the other conditions match, 
and it's going to execute this else block of code. 